Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this chapter, the Rules of Implication. Let's take a look at some of these practice exercises. So uh, for some of these you're going to fill in the citation and for some of these you're going to fill in the formula. So with the citation, one quick tip, um, the first premises listed, um, you know, excuse me, <laughs> for the first citations uh, are almost always going to be uh, the premises that are given for the uh, conclusion. So those are pretty straightforward, right? So we got the two premises listed in the sequence. Well, they each receive an A for uh, you know, the assumptions or the premises uh, within the argument. The only time when this isn't going to happen is when we have a uh, formula that's uh, you know, impossible to be false, right? It must be true. Um, we might get to those <laughs> later on, but for right now, don't don't really need to worry about it. So we have uh, our two premises, you know, if P then not Q and, you know, not not Q. And so the, the question is, well, uh, what rule now do we use to get to the conclusion not P? Yeah. Uh, using these two uh, premises. So, you know, you can think about the different rules that we have. Is it disjunctive syllogisms? Well, we'll know, right? There's no disjunction here. Uh, is it dilemma? No, for the same reason. There's no disjunction here. So, you know, think about the rules that are available and uh, how the uh, what inference uh, is used. So the <clears throat> two premises, uh, the first premise there, I should say, has a conditional. And if you notice, the second premise is the negation of the consequent of the conditional. Well, then that lets, lets us infer not P using the rule modus tonens. Or, sorry, mo modus tollens, not tonens, modus tollens. <laughs> uh, so, you know, take a look at the premises to see what rule is available to draw that inference. Let's take a look at another one. So we've got uh, P or Q and not P as the premises. And notice they're always going to be in order. You always list the premises in order as they appear in the sequence. And again, they both receive A, right? And that's our citation for an assumption. So the question is, well, what rule allows us to infer Q from this disjunction? Uh, well, the you know, that's disjunctive syllogism, right? So we have the disjunction and the negation of one of the disjuncts, so we get to infer the other disjunct. So we have our citation, 1, 2, ds, right? Uh, make sure you have that space between the last comma and the, uh, uh, the rule, and make sure there is no space between the numbers, right? You just want those numbers listed one right after the other. Okay, one more. Now we just got two lines here, or two entries. So we have a single premise, that's P and Q, and so we get to infer P. Well, what do we, well, we got two rules for conjunction, conjunction introduction and conjunction elimination. Well, we're not creating a conjunction here. We're pulling out one conjunct from a conjunction. Well, that's conjunction elimination. Mm -hmm. Let's try another one. Now this looks a little different, doesn't it? So we have a single premise, P, so we got that citation there, and then we have the sequel. Well, well, how do we how do we do this? Well, think about the rules that allow us to infer a conditional. All right, so we're not so the 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 conclusion is not a conjunction, so we're not going to use the conjunction rules. The conclusion is not a disjunction, so we're not going to use the disjunction rules. All right, so so what's what's conditionals? We got modus ponens. Well, we don't have a conditional by which we can infer you know this long conditional in the, con the conclusion. It's not modus tollens. We're neither getting the affirmation of the consequent or the denial of the antecedent, we're not, we're not able to conclude either one of those. It's not, uh, you know, hypothetical syllogism allows us to conclude a conditional. True, but we have to use two conditionals to do that. Well, what's left? Well, it's conditional proof. Conditional proof is the last rule available. So look at that uh, conclusion. Uh, the conclusion is a conditional if P then Q. That's the antecedent and the conclusion for that. Oh, excuse me, the consequent for that is then Q. Well, what do we, how do we, you know, have, you know, if P then Q, well, you get to assume that for the sake of conditional proof. And that's why you had that citation there. Assume for conditional proof. That's what that means. Okay. Well, remember for an assumption for, for a conditional proof, we assume the antecedent and we infer the consequent. So that's Q. That's a consequent there of that whole conditional. How do we get to do that? We get to use one and two lines 1 and 2 using modus ponens. Right? That's how we get Q. And from all of this, we get to infer the conditional, right? Uh, the, using the first, you know, the, the first number cited there is the assumption of the antecedent. The second number is the 
uh, is where we infer the consequent, and from that we get to infer the whole conditional. Let's look at another one where we're typing in the formula. Uh, so here's another little tip, right? When you're typing in the formulas, the first, pre uh, first lines listed should always be the premises. The last line listed should be the conclusion. Right? So you already know, all right, we got one premise here. Uh, you already know that that's going to be P and Q. That's going to be listed first. And somehow that line four has got to be Q and P. Well, then how do we do that? How do we get Q and P? Can we just switch it around? Well, you can, but that's an equivalence rule, which we're going to learn later. <laughs> so right now, we're not going to do that, right? We're right now going to do it the hard way. Uh, well, you, we get to pull out Q. You know, lo you know, look at the citations on the side there. The citations on the side give you clues to what you're going to infer and using what rule. So from line one, using conjunction elimination, we get to pull out Q. Well, line three also uses line one, using conjunction elimination. Well, we only have one conjunct left. Well, that's P. And then we get to put them together in the order that we wanted, Q and P, okay, using lines two and three with conjunction introduction. All right, let's take a look at another one. It's a little bit longer, and this time we're doing the citation again. Right? We got the citation again. So we have two premises, if P then Q, and if Q then R. Right? Those are two premises. And the conclusion is if P then R. All right? So think about the rules that we can use. Now we can use, you know, if we we're doing this differently, right? We could use hypothetical syllogism and just simply conclude if P then R. But I thought I might challenge you a little bit, get a little practice using conditional proof. So here I have P. Well, how do I have P there? Well, think about it. What rule do you use right, uh, to infer a conditional? And look at that, because we're inferring a conditional, right? The last line is there, if P then R, inferring a conditional. What rule do we use to infer a conditional where we just start out by assuming the antecedent. Well, that again, that's an uh, assumption for conditional proof. Right? So by the, the, using assumption of conditional proof, we can get Q. We use get Q from lines one and line three. See that Q that's up there? Line one and line three, using modus ponens. And now we're looking for R. Well, how do we get R? We'll look at line two and line four. Right? Again, using modus ponens, we get to, get, we get to infer R. Well, now we have the inference of the consequent, right? We've inferred our consequent. So we get to infer the conditional. We assumed P at line three. We inferred Q, excuse me, we inferred R at line five. So by conditional proof, we now get to infer if P then R. Uh, well, now this one looks interesting. We have a conditional, we infer another conditional. Okay, so we get... So remember our little tip here, right? The first uh, line we enter is always going to be the premise. And the last entry should always be the conclusion that we're looking for. In this case, it's a conditional, a really long conditional, a conditional composed of conditionals. When the antecedent is if Q, then R. When the consequent is if P, then R. How would we do this? And we got that ACP there that tells us we're using a conditional proof. Well, we get to assume if Q then R for conditional proof, right? That's the antecedent we want to get there. So when you assume an antecedent, it doesn't need to be an atomic, preposi atomic proposition. It can be a complex one. It can be a very long complex one if we really wanted to. But you know, for now, we're just going to assume the antecedent Q then R, then using hypothetical syllogism, right? Look at look at the citation there. It's using lines one and two with hypothetical syllogism. Well, what would you infer if P then Q, if Q then R? Well, then we get to infer if P then R. Well, now there's our consequent for the conditional and, con and the conclusion, okay? So we conclude with our, cons with our uh, uh, conditional, and the first number is the citation where we assume the antecedent. The second number is where we infer the consequent. We get to infer that, uh, we, we uh, excuse me, cite it using CP for conditional proof. Well, here's a long one. What are we going to do here? here now we're typing in citations, right? We're not put, putting in formula, but we're typing in citations. Well, what do you think we're going to use? Right? We start out with the disjunction, we end with the disjunction. That should be a big clue. If you start with the disjunction and end with the disjunction, you're probably, you know, think about the rules for disjunction. Yeah. Disjunctive syllogism. Does that finish with a disjunction? Not really. 
I mean, it can, it's possible, if one of the disjuncts is itself a disjunction, but you know, that's not the case here. Uh, we also have a disjunction and two conditionals. Well, that should be a clue. That should tell you that what we're going to use overall is the lemma. We'll use the lemma overall. So we have our A, I mean, remember we got three premises here. So we have A after each premise. And that tells us that's our assumption for the argument. And the way dilemma works is you, you start with a disjunction, you assume one disjunct, and you infer something further, then you assume the other disjunct, and you infer you know, an even more thing, right? You get to infer a disjunction with those two inferences. So that, that's a lot to take in. We'll just, we'll just look at it this way, right? So we got not P, that's our assumption for disjunction. That's why we have that a citation there, assume for disjunction. Well, using P, how do we infer not R? Well, where is R? If we look up in our uh, premises, well, R is up there in line two. Okay? And uh, since we have not P, we'll infer not R using modus tollens. So line two and four using modus tollens. Now we assume, so we got one side of the disjunct, right? Look at the conclusion. We got a disjunction. Right? We got not R from, from uh, not P. So let's try and get not s. Well, we got to get not s by assuming not q for the sake of dis using a, uh, assuming for disjunction. And we can easily infer not s using modus tollens, right? We find same thing as the uh, uh, as the other side. Right? We did that earlier, uh, but now we're using the other conditional. Now, since we've made this inference using each part of the the, the disjunction, we get to infer a disjunction. Right. We get not R, we, and you say we have, so look at the citation there. We have line one, that's the initial disjunction. The second number, that number four, that's where we assume one of the disjuncts. Five is where we infer not R, using that assumption, not P. Line six is where we assume the other disjunct. And uh, line seven is where we make the, uh, the inference for the other side of the disjunction in the conclusion. Okay, so that's how a dilemma works. Okay, well this one looks puzzling. We start with P, and we say, okay, well now I want to get this disjunction here. Oh, how do I get the disjunction? Well, if you're going to start with a single proposition, you're going to infer a disjunction. That's disjunction introduction. And yeah, it's a complex disjunct, that you're inferring, but you get to do that. It's disjunction introduction. Right? You can you can make a complex inference. Right? All right. Well, wow. Now we got another one. Well, this looks familiar, doesn't it? We got p, right? As one of as is that one of our premises? We've got a conditional if p then s. That's right? another assumption. Another assumption we get to list here. And we got a third conditional if q if q then t. And we're supposed to infer s disjunction t. Well, okay, so if you take a look, you can see how we get s. Right? If you look at lines 1 and 2, we can get s using uh, modus ponens. Right? And if we if we were just, there, you know, there would be a simple way we could do this, right? If we just had those two lines, then we can infer s and then using disjunction introduction uh, have s or t. But I thought I'd challenge you a little bit and you know, see what's going on here. Uh, I want you to use, we, you know, we could solve this using disjunction introduction. That's fine. All right, so you look at that line four, and you might think, oh, well, you, you know, that's what I'm going to do. But uh, we're not going to be able to do that yet, right? Because look at that uh, citation. It's using line one with disjunction introduction. Well, with line one, we don't get to infer S or T, because <laughs> that's just that's just P is right there in line one. So what did I have in mind here? Well, we've got two conditionals, if P then S and if Q then T. So how are we going to get that? Well, we can use dilemma again. You say, okay, great, but I don't have a first disjunction. Well, you can get that disjunction using P with disjunction introduction. We got P or Q, and now we have our disjunction that we can use for dilemma. All right. So we start by assuming P for the sake of a, a disjunction. Then we can then using modus ponens line two and five we get our s. Right? Then we assume q for the other side of the disjunction, and using uh, lines three 
and 7, right? We can you know, use modus ponens to infer t, and now we get our disjunction. Now, the first number is the initial disjunction, p or q. Second number is where we assume the left disjunct. This third number is where we conclude, uh, make, you know, draw an inference from that left disjunct. The uh, fourth number is where we assume the right disjunct. And the fifth number is where we draw the conclusion. And then finally, right, we have our SRT, and that, that's where we get, that's where, that's our disjunction that we can tune for uh, using dilemma. All right, so this is some practice. Good luck on the, uh, on the exercises. You're going to be filling in citations, and you're going to be filling in formulas. We alternate in between those two. Keep thinking. <laughs>